plan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise today in support of the uh, Leahy Graham Amendment that uh, hopefully we'll vote on here soon, uh, hopefully soon. Uh, the amendment uh, is pretty simple. It says uh, that the Congress has decided in its wisdom to make the uh, Chief of the National Guard Bureau a member of the Joint, uh, joint Staff. In 1947, we reorganized our Defense Department uh, and created the modern Department of Defense and the, uh, the, the Joint Chiefs uh, with a chairman, which will provide military advice to, our, to the Commander-in-Chief, the President of the United States. The chairman is the, the person responsible for advising the President. But uh, the, the Joint Chiefs are made up of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and uh, with this legislation, the uh, Chief of the National Guard Bureau will become a member. Nothing more, nothing less. It doesn't provide any power to the uh, Chief of the National Guard Bureau in terms of commanding troops. It doesn't interfere uh, in the relationship between the active forces, the Guard, or the Reserves. It simply states that now is the time for the National Guard, the citizen soldier, to have a voice on the uh, Joint Chiefs. And the reason I believe it's important, after 9-11, everything about the National Guard and our country's needs has changed. Uh, the National Guard is the frontline soldier, uh, airman, when it comes to natural disasters. When our homeland is hit by a natural disaster, they can be called up federally or at the state level to provide assistance uh, to, to our citizens. And we've seen the effects of natural, national, natural disasters. It can be a lot of uh, loss of life and property. That's a unique duty. In the last hurricane that came through uh, in the Northeast, the uh, chief of the National Guard Bureau said that no one from the White House called him other than mid-level mid operative, and he never really interacted with the, uh, uh, the Joint Chiefs at all about the needs and capability of the Guard. Uh, General Dempsey, the new chairman of the Joint Chiefs, has invited uh, General McKinley, the chief of the National Guard Bureau, to be an ad hoc member. That's great. But I asked him if you somehow he fell out of favor, could you kick him out of the room? And the answer is yes. And I think the Congress needs to make a decision here about the role of the citizen soldier. If you believe, as I do, they're indispensable to fighting the war on terror, they have some leading missions when it comes to homeland security post 9-11. Uh, that they, their voice needs to be heard. The, the active duty forces need, needs to have the chief of the National Guard Bureau in that room advising them about the capability and readiness of the National Guard, uh, their dual status capabilities, what they can do at the state level and the federal level. And I guess I can boil it down to this. To me, it was a national shame and disgrace to deploy National Guard troops after 9-11 without adequate body armor or equipment. And this will make it very hard for that to happen again because the chief of the National Guard Bureau will be in the room with his counterparts talking about the needs of this force. And hopefully the coordination and collaboration through this new change will allow the force to be ready, deployable, and we'll never go back to that time period in our history where the Guard and Reserve was called up without adequate equipment, body armor, ready to, go, ready to go to war. This is a change that I think makes sense post 9-11. It doesn't interfere with the day-to-day -day operations of the military, doesn't confer any power on the National Guard they don't already have. It's just one more voice at a table at a time when I think that voice needs to be heard. The world has changed. Our nation's defense needs have changed post 9-11. And uh, we have 67 co-sponsors, and I'm very proud of the fact that this is one of the most bipartisan pieces of legislations, legislation I've ever been involved with. Senator Lay has been a great partner, my co-chairman of the Guard Caucus, and I look forward to, to having a vote. Senator McCain and Levin have done a great job managing this bill. If you've got amendments, <laughs> uh, uh, please work with these two gentlemen. Uh, we don't want this Congress to go down in history as being the first Congress in 51 years that could not pass a defense authorization bill. We've got enough things going against us already as a Congress. We don't want to add that to the list. So Senator Lay, Lay and myself are willing to do this by voice vote, whatever the body would like. Uh, Senator Reed, my good friend from Rhode Island, has a second-degree amendment that basically takes our legislation and 
defeats the purpose of it. Senator Webb has a, a second degree amendment that would substitute a membership and the chairman of the Joint, Ch uh, the, uh, the joint Chiefs uh, with a reporting requirement that just quite frankly misses the mark. Both fine men. The Senator Webb who argued years ago that the Marine Corps needs to be a member of the Joint Chiefs and everybody thought the Navy would have two votes and they fought passionately against it. And it's worked out pretty well. So all the problems with making the Marine Corps a member of the Joint Chiefs haven't panned out. Um, uh, Goldwater and Nichols was fought by everybody except the chairman of the Joint Chiefs when it was first introduced. So change comes hard to the Pentagon. This is a change that I think makes common sense. And I would say after 9-11, our citizen soldier deserves this recognition. This would be a great step forward in making sure they're integrated and they never go to war again unless they're really prepared to go. And having that voice day in, day out in the tank, I think will do everybody a, a, a lot of good. So I just hope we can vote on this soon. I appreciate Senator uh, McCain and Levin's leadership on this bill. I think we've got a good bill for our men and women in uniform. And uh, I look forward to bringing this up to the floor for a vote. And to my colleagues who want to amend the bill, I appreciate uh, uh, the differences we have, but uh, I think the time has come for the National Guard to be a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff with a full voice, uh, an ability to be heard like they've never been heard before. And the reason they need, to be, they need to be heard, unlike any other time, is that we depend on them, unlike any other time, except maybe the first engagement. When you look who's been around the longest, the first shot fired in creating this nation was fired by the citizen soldier. 200 something years later, let's make sure that they're integrated into our defense infrastructure at the highest levels because their voice needs to be heard. With that, I yield the floor.